Well, the trench came about um, because uh, I'm in my final year of university at the University of Winchester, uh, studying film production. And I had to do uh, my final major project, so my equivalent dissertation film, if you like, my, my big uh, big final sort of uh, film project for my showreel. Um, and uh, I decided quite early on that I was going to do a docudrama about uh, the signalers of the First World War who were in charge of communications, maintaining the early sort of telecommunications, telegraph lines, uh, phone lines in the trenches, um, which was a very dangerous job, but also, of course, a very important, very vital job, um, which uh, is often overlooked in uh, film and media today. I mean, you, you barely get any sort of a mention of them. So I decided I'd sort of set the record straight and, and focus on uh, the signals of which my great-grandfather was one, um, Private Lewis Blackman of the Royal Fusiliers. Um, so so I had the idea, I wrote out the script uh, for about a, a 30 minute film, a short docudrama, um, but then of course the Covid pandemic came along and uh, heavy restrictions were put into place, uh, on, particularly on us creative uh, students, um, which is a very practical course, and we were only allowed to film either on campus, which was impractical for me because there weren't any, you know, th there are older buildings, but there are none that would suit and there was nowhere I could build a trench uh, for the project so I thought the other option was I could bring all of the equipment home um, and uh, film in any location I could find here um, that was permitted so I thought well I'm, I'm going to have to find a way of, 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 of building this set so I thought well I mean I, I've got a quite a big back garden so I'm, I'm going to build the trench in there the uh, the trench wall and the top and the, the start of no man's land, if you will, um, was constructed as a set with wooden supports and, and soil over the top, um, along with sandbags and barbed wire to add that extra sort of uh, uh, realism to it. And uh, it, it turned out uh, pretty well. Um, I mean, my, my, my mum at first was not too pleased at the idea of me uh, tearing up part of the garden um, for uh, digging, you know, trenches, as, as I don't think many a, a parent would be. Um, but she realised, you know, how important it was and what a passion I had for the project. And she thought, well, you know, it's, it's, it's important for the course and it, it's got to be done. And so in the end, her and my, my dad, they were, they were happy to let me uh, construct, uh, construct it and uh, put it all together and kit it out with, you know, original uh, props and, and uh, replica bits from uh, my uh, contact up uh, in Suffolk at Khaki Devil, um, Taff Gillingham, who's been a great help throughout this project, providing a lot of historical advice, particularly when it came to script writing. And because I couldn't hire actors at such late notice, I had to, you know, take on the role of the Royal Fusilier Signaller, so I was sort of cameo rolling, multitasking, filming, directing and starring at the same time, which I have had to do a lot in this pandemic situation because you can't really have actors and certainly we couldn't earlier on in this semester. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I did all these roles and with a lot of help from my parents, and my, my, my sibling, my brother, um, it was, uh, which I'm very grateful for because uh, it would have been a, quite a job as a one man, one man show uh, to do. And so, I, as I say, it's, I, I, it was important to me to finally sort of tell their story um, and get that out there um, and, and film it as, as best I could in the current situation.